past my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hi guys. So a little bit of a surprise video here for you and me. I definitely do not usually do this, but I do feel led to uh, talk a little bit about this tarot spread that I have here. So I've got this deck chilling. I've got my pyrite here, which is just an amazing stone. I just got this a few days ago, um, like around the Aries new moon. So a lot of new manifestations here. And I've got that chilling there on the Ace of Cups. So let me just explain a little bit about what this spread is for. Um, every every Tuesday, well, sometimes I for, sometimes I forget, but every Tuesday um, I've had Tarot Tuesday. That I, I hashtag Tarot Tuesday, and I pull a card or sometimes two cards, but there'll be a, a Tarot message that I that I talk about on Tarot Tuesday. So today's Wednesday, the 18th. Yesterday I pulled. And you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I basically take a picture of what card I pull. And then I channel a message about that tarot card. So yesterday, a very beautiful and very interesting message came out, you guys. And I'm feeling led. I mean, today, my spirit guides are just... I've recorded three videos today. And I was planning on recording my Saturn videos, but those can wait because there's a lot of spiritual energy coming here, guys. I am not surprised because we have this Aries new moon that we just got through and headed towards the Scorpio full moon. So, you know, there's just new versions of ourselves um, approaching and we're just transforming into those individuals. So I do what I feel led to do and I wanted to record a video and I felt the need to record a video. I could have made a post about this, but I just need to record and show you guys how powerful this message is. So this is for the week. This tarot message is for basically between April uh, 17th all the way to, a to April Tuesday, April 17th to Tuesday, April 24th. That's what I pulled this message about, okay? And my message for Tarot Tuesday is the sun. So we did have the sun card pop, pop out. So we know what the sun card means, right? It means happiness. This is one of the happiest cards that we can get in tarot, okay? And if some of you want to follow me on Instagram or add me on Facebook, that information is down below. Um, if you do add me on Facebook, please send me a message because a lot of I've gotten a lot of friend requests and I'm, I haven't responded to them yet because I'm not sure... You know, if you don't have something very astrological on your Facebook, you might want to send me a message and say, hey, I watch your videos, I'm following you to keep updated, or maybe you guys just follow me. Follow me on Facebook. You can add me if you want, but if I don't respond, send me a message and tell me why you added me. So yeah, if you want to see, if you want to see this every Tuesday and stay updated, then follow me on Instagram. This is a very important message, you guys. I shuffled and I shuffled and the sun came out. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the, the Ten of Cups. Now, this is such a powerful message, you guys. So, I um, sometimes I feel led to move the cards around. So, basically, what, was, what went on is that this is what it looked like. I had the sun come out, and the Ten of Cups was on the bottom of the deck. So, the message for this week is the Ten of Cups and the sun. Now, come on now. That is such a happy message, you know? I'm feeling so many different things. So what I did was I picked up the Ten of Cups and put it over here to reveal the Hierophant. And the Hierophant, so we had the Sun, a big deck in the middle with the Hierophant on top, and then a big deck over here with the, with the, the Ten of Cups. And so I felt led to move this, I picked up the Hierophant, and that revealed the Ace of Cups. So... What we have here is a, what I can see. I'm not sure if you guys can see it very well, but I have the, the Sun, the Ace of Cups, the Ten of Cups, and the Hierophant card. So for those of you who haven't seen my message, I talked a lot about something very, this is a very happy week for us. There's a lot, and I don't know if all of us are going to tap into this happiness, but I see, you know, for the Sun and the Ten of Cups being the overall message and then revealing the Ace of Cups with the Taurus, I mean, a lot of us are going to experience a lot of awareness. The sun is is happiness, positivity, success, vitality, warmth, light, love, 
all of those beautiful, beautiful messages there. But to me, the sun is awareness. So there's going to be an emotional awareness that takes place this week, you guys. Between now and the and next Tuesday on the 24th, we're going to gain emotional awareness towards something. You know, there's going to be something, and this is timeless, so it could happen a little bit. This could have already happened for some of us. It could happen a little bit after the 24th. So definitely don't don't think that this can only happen on the on on this week because this is a very powerful message and and I didn't I didn't make this happen. I shuffled and this is what happened. So I wanted to come on here today and and show you a little bit more about that. So we already know that this is going to be a very enlightening week um because we have the sun card as the main main card with the 10 of cups at the bottom. So this is like emotional awareness. This is being a completely emotionally Fulfilled. There's some sort of emotional completion, which definitely is talking about the Aries new moon in Chiron entering Aries this week. We have the Aries new moon was on the 15th. That already happened. So we enter this week, you guys, um, with a new state of awareness with the sun in Aries. The sun in Aries really did. The sun is exalted in Aries. So this is um, really expanding a lot of our emotional awareness, especially when the moon went there. We had that new moon. The sun and the moon were both in Aries. So we're definitely starting a new emotional cycle, you guys. And that's why the Ace of Cups is right here in the middle. So for some of you, you may gain new emotional awareness or new emotional healing. But others of you may even gain the awareness or maybe some sort of happy new vibration of love coming into your life. Because the Ace of Cups with the Ten of Cups is definitely talking about love. It's talking about marriage and happiness. So there could be a significant new relationship that comes into our lives this is actually, I'm definitely talking to all of us because I'm, I'm definitely, you know, this is, it includes me. So some sort of new love or some new emotional, this is like the 11 of cups. So that's beautiful message there. Definitely, definitely a beautiful message. So overall, it's, it's talking about emotional happiness, uh, happiness, emotional harmony. Now I do feel led to talk about Taurus season because we have the Taurus card directly a part of this reading symbolizing not only some sort of commitment but the when the sun enters Taurus so tomorrow and on the 20th which would be Thursday Thursday the 20th I believe the sun is going to enter Taurus and now this spread so this is something that's happening this week you guys the sun in Taurus is a very important message for this week something is going to shift this week when and it has something to do with the sun in Taurus this is a part of this message here I don't know if there's a significant Taurus in some of your guys' life, but the Taurus card is talking about a commitment. It also talks about our beliefs. It talks about uh, religion for some people. So there could be something that we become aware of in our beliefs. This is the awareness of our own beliefs. This is um, some sort of happy commitment that, that, that is made by us or someone makes it for us. But, you know, guys, we had this very beautiful message for Tarot Tuesday come out. So what I want to do is just basically show you guys what's underneath these cards. Because I can't show you that in a picture, right? So what I did was I took a picture of the sun and the ten of cups. And I took a picture of what you see here. So I want to take a look at what's underneath this ace of cups. Because I did accidentally bump this card up. And I realized that the two of swords was underneath it, you guys. So this is what I really want to show you. Which is, this might be a week for some of us to make an emotional decision. Some of us could be at an emotional crossroad. Some of us are blinding ourselves to our emotion, but it's kind of hard to do that when the sun is a part of this reading. So the sun is trying to, sh to make you aware of something beneath the surface, which is talking about the Aries new moon and the Taurus new moon as well. So I say that because we have this blindfold on over here in this two of swords, in this moon here. So there's a lot of deep emotion that we're keeping under the surface. See how her back is turned to the emotion? So some of us have turned our back on something that we know we feel. Our intuition is trying to reveal it. The sun is trying to make you aware of it. So, you know, there is a certain aware, there's a decision to make. And it, I don't know if it's something to do with some sort of healing crossroad. But this is being mentally confused about some sort of emotion. And this is a lot of emotion because it's the Ace of Cups. So we see that, that emotion just kind of pouring out there. Also, this is a new love. This is talking about a love relationship with some of us. So, you know, for this to be right underneath, this is how it was. It was right underneath the Ace of Cups. I wouldn't even have seen this card unless I bumped it. 
So this tells me that this emotional, this happiness, that we might have to make a decision to be this happy. We might have to, to choose a different route. Some of us are really going to, we've been going right. We've been traveling on a certain road and now we're going to literally do a 360 or a 180 and we're going to turn a direction. This is talking about an emotional decision. So this could be a new love. This could be a relationship for some of you. It could be a business relationship, but it's an emotional decision. I am seeing that. And it's an emotional decision that we've been procrastinating on. We've been very confused about this perhaps for years, perhaps for months, some of us for longer. But this week is bringing an emotional decision to the, to the forefront. Basically, we're going to gain awareness of this emotional decision. And now, okay, I'm just going to pull these cards as they go, okay? So we had the, the Ace of Cups. We put that right there, and then the Ace of Cups has something directly to do with this Two of Swords, okay? And this Two of Swords has something directly to do with complete and utter change, because now we have the the a Wheel of Fortune. So this, this decision, this emotional decision here with these three cards, it definitely tells me that this is a crossroads based off of some sort of a new emotional karma. Now, guys, the New Moon in Aries... In Chiron and Aries is definitely starting new emotional cycles. This is this is going from the twelfth house of Pisces to the the first house of Aries. So we have been reborn emotionally with this new moon. Aries season was definitely a very new beginning. So there is a lot changing. Now we have Saturn retrograde. Okay, I know Saturn is considered the world card, but the Wheel of Fortune and the World card have always seemed very similar to me. They both talk about a cycle that's completing. They both talk about our fortune and our destiny and our karma. So the wheel of fortune, this looks like the zodiac wheel to me. So there's definitely, this is a karmic decision. And some of us, this decision has already been made in another realm. But we're just letting, the, some of us are really stuck emotionally and we're not, we don't want to see this change. Some of us don't want to see this new emotional change. But, you know, here comes the king of cups to tell you that this emotional change is almost, un, like we have to embrace our emotion. You know, there's a lot here about emotional awareness, and it's that awareness of these emotions that are going to ultimately lead us to this Ten of Cups happy complete. The Ace of Cups is trying to fill the Ten of Cups, and the Sun is trying to shine light, warmth, and love on this harmonious situation. This is so beautiful, you guys. So there's an emotional cycle that has completed, and some of us are a little confused. Some of us aren't seeing that yet, but we're going to see it come Taurus season emotional this is emotional karma this is an emotional cycle and there's a decision that has to do with love and emotion on the table now that i'm the king of cups is someone who embraces his emotion he's not going to be like this these people here this is someone who is emotionally confused they're taking what they feel and getting stuck in their head about it but the king of cups would never do that so he's here to to help us and to show us how easy it is to really give into our emotion. I mean, the King of Cups, he wears a, a, a fish necklace. So he, you know, this is a Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. And if there's anything about Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that I know, we do not turn our back on our emotions for too long. Especially when we feel the new beginning of emotion coming. But we are going to have to to make a decision about this uh, this change. We really are, and it's not going to help if we have a blindfold. This is not a blindfolded emotional energy. This is someone who wears his emotions proudly, someone who follows their emotion. The King of Cups, is the, he has emotional authority. He is an emotional leader. You know, he never confuses himself about emotion because he knows what he feels, and he feels what he knows, and that's what allows him to have this intuitive, you know, um, ability to embrace his emotions. Embracing our emotions is not as easy for all of us. You know what I mean? But the King of Cups is here to say that this is an emotional change. This is some of the, you might have some sort of King of Cups in your life. But I just see a lot of emotion here. And now we get into a different part of the reading because now we reveal the Ace of Swords. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the Ace of Wands is involved here, the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups. So now we have the Ace of Swords. We already have the Ace of Cups on the table. Some of you might not be able to see this whole reading, but I'm trying here. I'm going to try to show you the whole thing, but I'm also going to hold up some of these cards too. So just bear with me. I'm recording on a laptop, so it's kind of hard, but Ace of Swords. So after this emotional change takes place this week, you guys, 
or I feel like this is the rest of April. So for the rest of April, this emotional change, this change in direction is going to cause a lot of emotion, but good emotion though. It's a change that you're going to be able to feel inside intuitively and spiritually and emotionally. So after this, after you get out of your head about this new love and about this new emotion, change is going to take place, a complete change of the wheel. And, you know, this is going to involve this King of Cups energy, being on the throne of your own emotion, taking back the authority lead, and leading in this emotional state, okay? Still doing what it takes to, to rule and to be this king. And then we have the Ace of Swords. So you do gain clarity at, of this emotion and over this change. So much so that now we have the Queen of Swords. So we have the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords on the table, which is every king and queen is potentially a union, right? So... We definitely have the Queen of Swords here. So to have the Queen of Swords and then following that, the, 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 the Ace of Swords and then following that, the Queen of Swords, this is the same sword. But this is just you becoming um, authority of your own mind. So it's interesting that we had the Two of Swords, right? And confused about this. But later on in the week, we are going to gain, we're going to choose one of those swords, which means we're going to choose a direction. Because we go from the Two of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune to the King of Cups to the Ace of Swords. So there's like an emotional new beginning here, which ultimately leads to um, a mental new beginning. This has a lot to do with emotion and mental, our, our emotional clarity, basically. So we have the Ace of Swords given to us after this emotional karma. We're going to gain clarity, basically, over this, this emotion, over spirit. Over this change, we're going to start to, you know, as humans, even if we're water signs and fire signs, we all, we all do, we do look for the logic in things because we're humans and we're analyzers. So we do like to have mental clarity over a situation. And then some of us like to have emotional clarity as well. We don't start the week off with emotional clarity. There's so much happiness that comes in that it actually confuses us. There's so much emotion that comes in that it actually confuses us, but it's happening because everything's about to change. And throughout this change, Spirit is saying that we need to have emotional stability and emotional authority. We need to definitely, definitely keep our emotions in check during this situation, but don't ignore them fully because our emotions are actually keys and clues throughout this uh, change. But we do, for the more logical people listening, we do have this very clear-minded clear clarity energy coming in so ace of swords new mental beginning and then the queen of swords takes hold of that ace of swords and she starts to basically gain and demand mental clarity and then we have the death card so right now on the table we have scorpio and taurus which is literally what's about to happen we have the sun and taurus and then we're going to have a full moon in scorpio at the end of the month so this is where the reading kind of ends here, guys. I don't want to like go through all the 78 cards with you. But as far as this week, we end, we end the month with uh, the Scorpio full moon. So this might be actually getting into even farther into the month. So this might be the week. I think we end the week with mental clarity over this emotional change and this new love. And then we have this Scorpio full moon. So we can even talk a little bit about that and how... Mentally, we're going to have to literally make sure that we're meditating. And I mean, this is a complete transformation. That Scorpio full moon is going to transform all of us. It's going to transform the darkness. It's going to transform the light. It's going to, excuse me, transform who we are as people. This is a death and rebirth. So there's things that are dying. No wonder we're confused because death and both death and birth are both very emotional. Okay. Death and birth are very emotional. That's why Scorpio, the fixed water sign, rules death and rebirth. Because it's a water sign. And, water, and you know, when something dies, we cry. When something's born, we cry. There are happy tears. There are sad tears. But it's water either way. So I think we're feeling emotional because of what we're leaving behind. And we're also feeling emotional because of what beauty is on the way that we can feel. So this transformation... Is taking place and it's going to take place in a meditative state it's going to take place by seeking sanctuary and, and praying and healing so this is a transformation of healing now I want to show you the magician though because this is where the reading ends so we are transforming into masters of our own elements earth signs water signs air signs fire signs we have all the suits on the table so this is a transformation for all elements and this is a mastery taking place in all the elements a mastery of our emotion 
mastery of our minds, mastery of our passion and of our light, mastery of our own realistic realities and grounded positions. This is the magician. This is mental mastery. Like this is the Mercury card. So for some of us, we have been, we're enlightened and we have this infinity symbol over our head. So, you know, we are, this is definitely magical, you guys. We have the mat, this is the magic card. So there's going to be magic that takes place this week as well. And it has something to do with Taurus and Scorpio energy. So throughout Taurus season and indefinitely ending on this, this, this Scorpio, this ends with a transformation. It ends with a, with a mental transformation, a spiritual transformation. That's what this means is a mental, tra spiritual transformation. And that's that full moon at the end of the month there. That's why the reading kind of stops. But we're going to actually look underneath this hierophant and we're going to look underneath this, these cups too. So this is what that Ace of Cups was about, you guys. This new love definitely brings in a lot of change. Some of us are going to meet somebody that we just change with. We just go to go with them. And it's going to be emotional, but you're but come on now, don't be afraid because we have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of uh and the Queen of Swords. So that's two very powerful mental energies that we end with. And then we we have the the after all that mental energy there towards the end, we need to rest our minds so that we can transformed entirely so this is a transformation of emotion this is a transformation of karma so we have the ace of cups the two of swords the wheel of fortune the king of cups the ace of swords the queen of swords i hope i said that right ace of cups two of swords wheel of fortune king of cups ace of swords queen of swords so that's just looking really interesting to me guys there is an emotional decision this week and it, it's faded. This this decision was orchestrated by the universe. And it, it has everything to do with our karma, with Saturn going retrograde. Okay, for some of us, the Saturn retrograde is going to bring up a lot of past emotions that we need to gain clarity over. But either way, the Queen of Swords and the King of Cups are here to tell us to be the king of our emotion and the queen of our thoughts. Even if you're masculine or feminine, it doesn't matter. That's the message here, okay? So we're going to put these cards back. We already know what this scenario is, okay? I'm just trying to give you a closer look here. Definitely, I'm loving that magician. Loving that Scorpio and Taurus are right here on the table now. So we put the Queen of Swords back. We put the Ace of Swords back. And I can explain this as I go. So this transformation is a transformation of our own thought and our own truth. This is, involves the Queen of Swords and, the, and this Ace of Swords. This is when we're speaking our truth this week or for the rest of the month. This is, and that truth has a lot to do with our own emotional stability. It has a lot to do with our own emotional leadership and authority. And then these cards here are what really kick me. Because there is a definitely a decision to make. And whatever decision you make, guys, it's going to determine what, we, what direction this wheel turns. So this decision is not just an easy decision. The Two of Swords never talks about an easy decision. This isn't yes or no. This is, wow, my whole life is going to change after I make this decision. No wonder I'm blindfolding myself to it so this you know we need to gain emotion over this change you know for the two the for the two of swords to be right on top of the king the wheel of fortune this is a decision about change this is a decision about our own karma and our own fortune so that is intense and then we, we bring it back to this ace of cups this all was initiated by some sort of new love or new emotional healing so let's take a look here at the Ten of Cups, okay? This was the bottom of the deck. So now we're looking into the underlying energy. So we have the Ten of Cups, which we all know is a marriage. This is happiness. This is emotional harmony, emotional completion. So this is that new moon. Now look and see what we have under that. We have the Ace of Wands. So this is manifestation. Some of us, this isn't just easy happiness. Some of us manifested this happiness. Some of us manifested these relationships with our soulmates and our twin flames. Some of this is very passionate and fiery. This could be Aries season. This could be the Aries new moon manifesting a new emotional cycle of happiness for us. And it has a lot to do with the truth, you guys, because we have the Page of Swords. Okay, so this is something coming in. You know, this is a manifested me message of truth that that's coming in this is clarity over this ace of wands and now we have the justice card with the six of wands so this is going to be a very victorious justice i mean i haven't even seen these cards 
I pulled these, I let these sit overnight. I was like, uh-uh, I have got to let this message sit for a little while and I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. So that's what I did. This has literally been sitting here and I haven't even seen these cards yet. So I'm seeing these with you right now. So this is victorious. This is justice, victory, okay? This is us gaining victory over a justified situation. This is balance and peace being recognized for what what we've accomplished and what we've done this is literally karma like the justice card so that could be the libra full moon that happened last month and then we have the fool card oh my goodness with the world so guys there's a new beginning on the table here but we're gonna have to take a risk we're gonna have to take a risk for this cycle this is remember i told you the word this is saturn so saturn has gone retrograde and there's a cycle that's completed because of that. There's a cycle that's completed because of the new moon in Aries. So there is a victorious new beginning that is happening. It's This energy is going to last a lifetime. But guys, this is what spirit is showing me that's happening over the next week. So look at all that's happening in, just in the short period of time of a week. There's, this is a victorious new beginning. And then after that new beginning, we have the world. So some of you guys decide to start a brand new cycle and, you know, it might be, oh my goodness, we have all four aces in this reading. Because now we have, right after this card is the ace of pentacles over here. So this is a new beginning for all zodiac signs. For air, for earth, for water, for fire. And this is the soulmate card. So this is a new beginning with something from the past. It might be emotion from the past. Some of it, now, you know, our soulmates can be our children. It could be our friends. So it's going to play out in different ways, you guys. But this is an overall message for everyone. And I see a new beginning because of a completed cycle. You know, and you're blessed with, you're protected with this celebration energy. This is good fortune and good luck. So this, you are blessed. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take this leap and take this risk with this new beginning because you are, you're surround, this new beginning is surrounded by victory and, and definitely good luck and fortune. So do not be afraid to, to jump this week because something, you don't want to miss this. And w since the wheel, the wheel of fortune and the world are a part of this reading, I don't think that we even have much free will over this. I think this is just a part of our karma. Like I said, this may have something to do with a soulmate coming back for some of you or some sort of emotional endeavor from your past coming back. You could have walked away from this situation before, but now you're either giving or receiving a cup. And it might have something to do with children. It might have something to do with a past life, but this is literally the soulmate card. This is a new cycle of soulmates coming in. A lot of you are going to meet your true soulmate. You're going to meet your true twin flame, and it's, it's, it's more happiness than you can even, even comprehend. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles with the Knight of Wands in the Star card. What? You guys, this is rushing forward to stability, rushing forward to this new... The universe is giving us, either way, since we had all the Aces, this is the universe giving us something real, giving us emotion, giving us passion, giving us clarity. Each Ace talks about something coming out of the sky for us. So this is something that's very real and balanced. You can see this. It's valuable. This is Taurus season we're talking about here. Taurus season is going to take this Aries energy and ground it. See how we have this Aries energy right here charging forward to this ace? So this is Aries energy in a nutshell being grounded by this ace of pentacles in the star card. So this is about our wishes, our, our dreams, having hope, faith, inspiration, renewal. So this fire earth energy, we are on the cusp of Aries Taurus right now, which is the cusp of power, you guys. So there's a wish coming true that we're charging forward to. And it's grounded. Okay, it has something to do with our past lives, people from our past. Cycles completing with soulmates and twin flames, new beginnings, risks. Taking a risk to be victorious, starting a new beginning, the scales balancing, karma balancing, things coming back around because of Saturn, this new truth, this new message, this is a message coming in. It has everything to do with these Ten of Cups and this Ace of Wands. So guys, this message this week is very, very powerful. We have all the Aces, so the universe is literally giving us power, power, power. Now we're going to start with this Taurus season. Okay, this is my last little section here before I upload this video for you guys to see. So, 
Taurus season is a time to really, really prepare for our grounded future. Okay, we have the Taurus card, which means commitment. It means tradition. Okay, so this, this reading has a lot to do with tradition as well. Traditional happiness, our traditional emotions, our traditional balance and harmony and truth. Traditional means that it's always been this way. So you want to think back to what has always made you happy. What has always made you feel complete? Those are the things that are coming back into our life now, this week and throughout the month and throughout the rest of the year. So Taurus season is a decision. It's a, it's a time to look out to the horizon. You know, spring is going to be here, summer. So we have some things to think about. This is us thinking towards our future and learning from that. Now, I really do see Taurus season as a time to really, really, you know, maybe some of us are even going to be spending time alone so that we can kind of think about our future. And it's about thinking about our future in a way that what makes you happy? What makes you feel the warmth and the bright love from the sun and positivity? This is also a celebration. So what makes you happy and joyful and celebrative? That's what you want to think about during this moment in Taurus season, okay? Make sure you're thinking about your future and only your future. Do not sacrifice these beautiful, beautiful opportunities for somebody else. That would not be traditional. That would not be the best way to go. This might be a marriage. I see marriage on the table for some of you, and you guys are thinking about it. But this is also the high priest. So, you know, you guys might be getting married. Some of you might be getting married this week. Some of you might be moving in with people. I don't know. It's a lot of happiness. And this, Taurus is all about value. Taurus is all about our, our own value, our resources, our finances. So we move from this Aries energy, which is rightfully selfish. Aries is supposed to be selfish. They're all about their self. The house, the first house is all about self. So we have spent the last month determining who we are, stepping into these new versions of ourselves. So now it's time to apply what we've learned about who we are to what we value. Some of us value ourselves. Some of us value our hard work. Some of us value our foundation. Some of us value tradition. Some of us value the, our emotions and our, our new emotional journey and our soulmates and our twin flames. So you want to ask yourself what it is that you value. This is when we're going to be looking out into the horizon to determine our new foundation, to determine an, an entirely new life. Taurus season is going to be a lot like that for some of us. Now we go from the three of wands to the... King of Wands, to the Five of Wands, to the Two of Wands, to this grounded energy King of Pentacles. So, yeah, we have a message left over there, which is the King of Pentacles. Grounding ourselves, even though we're overwhelmed with emotional opportunity. But also being awakened by the heavens and walking away for a spiritual journey. I'll get into that in a little bit. But first, I want to finish this, this wand energy because look at how many wands. So, Taurus is very much using this Aries fire energy. The fire is not going to be gone in, in Taurus season. Okay, so we have the two of wands and the three of wands. We start out with the three of wands and we and we end with the two of wands. So see how that those are both on the outer of this reading? We have the three of wands and the two of wands. So this is very much, very much about us taking passionate authority for our own life. Fire, 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 fire. So Aries season taught us about fire. It taught us about passion. And we, we might be a little all over the place right now, symbolized by the five of wands. But, you know, it's very important that we are thinking about our own future. Because now we have the world in our hands. And some of us are really reflecting on, you know, we have all these different backgrounds. Look at all these different energies going in different ways. But that doesn't mean that you can't get everything going in the same direction, especially passionately. So this is about you deciding, do you want to stay where you are because it's always what you've known? Or do you want to take a chance with the unknown and take a risk like the Fool card? So the Two of Wands asks you, this is a portal. This is a chaotic portal of fire and passion that we're going to enter this week. And we're going to be in the, in the middle of this vortex, in the middle of this portal, in the middle of these two decisions, in the middle of these two worlds. We are standing in the middle of two different worlds this, this week. And what we decide this week is going to determine how our spring goes, how our summer goes, how our fall goes, how our winter goes. This is a life decision that we are making now. Every decision has this moment. You know, no matter where you are in life, there was a point in time when you made a decision to get there. And you have to make the decision 
farther down the road than you do before you reap the reward. So this moment matters. This is a very important crossroads. So what you choose, I know it seems chaotic, but you're you're facing this chaos. This guy, he is focusing on the, all the energy in his world. And yeah, there, there's a lot to consider there, but you're going to choose one of those wands, just like you're going to choose one of those swords. So you're going to choose something passionately and mentally this month. And you're going to gain emotional clarity over it. You're going to gain happiness. So, you know, all of us are going to be choosing different things. But make sure you're choosing love. Don't choose chaos. You might be used to chaos, but you can choose the more peaceful wand. You can choose the more passionate, grounded, loving, creative wand. You can leave the chaotic world behind, turn a different direction, take, take, do what it takes to start a new peaceful life for yourself. It might be take a lot of painful releasing. It might, it might involve a lot of painful endings, but ultimately it's going to be worth it. You're not going to regret it. So there's a lot here. You know, we have the King of Wands here to tell us the, the, if anybody knows how to work with wands, it's the King of Wands. He understands how to be a passionate leader. He understands how to harness his own creative thoughts. He doesn't wait on anybody else. He goes to get it himself. This is an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. In Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, they understand fire. So we're going to need to embody the King of Swords, the King of, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the Queen of Swords, the King of Pentacles. You know, we're going to need to embody the King of Cups. We have a lot of kings here, King of Pentacles, King of Cups, King of Wands. The only king that we didn't get is the king of swords, and that's because we got the queen of swords. So it's about feminine thoughts. We need to think in an emotional way or think in a more feminine way. But as far as our our reality and our passion and our emotions, we need to be very masculine this week. But the king of wands is here to help us with these wand decisions. You know, this is about our passionate future. And obviously we choose one of those wands because here we are as the king of wands and he has one wand. And this is enough wand. This is this this one wand is enough to create this whole situation. So we have the Hierophant, the Three of Wands, the King of Wands, the Five of Wands, and the Two of Wands. So I see a very tra traditional future. Some of us need to really think about what we want for our traditional future. What do we want to see happen for the next several years down the road because that's what this decision is about you guys it's the king of wands the king of wands is right in the middle see there's two cards left over so that tells me that this is literally you know this king is focused more on this decision he is looking at the three of wands in the hierophant he is not looking at the five of wands in the two of wands so he doesn't want to be confused anymore he's already made a decision about his world so there's a decision that you're leaning more towards than the other. And I'm happy to see that because you're turning your back on chaos. The King of Wands, he doesn't, this is young dudes. The King of Wands used to be a little guy like this, but he's so mature now that he's able to sit down while all this chaos is happening on, around him and behind his back. A lot of chaos happening behind our back, you guys. But at the end of this reading, we are focused and we are sound when we take some time. And see, these cards are very similar. Okay, it's the three of wands and the two of wands. So it's about making a decision. You know, it's about thinking about our traditional future. And, you know, there is a lot of chaos surrounding us, but this is a passionate traditional decision. And we need to choose the le the peaceful world, the less chaotic world. Okay, the king of wands is right in the middle here, right underneath the king of pentacles. So it's like grounded passion, you know. So let's see if I'm getting anything else about this and then I'm going to talk to you about this little deck and then we're going to get this video uploaded so you guys can hear this message too. And it's a lot for me to think about as a tarot reader. It's it's a lot. This is for all of us for the, this week. So you definitely want to be thinking about your own traditional values. You want to be thinking, some of you are thinking about a marriage or you're thinking about, this is us reflecting on our commitments, Saturn retrograde, for reflecting on our commitments, reflecting on our foundation and on our tradition. We want something traditional, even if it's a marriage or a relationship or just a, um, a living situation. And this is surrounded by the authority of the King of Wands. So make sure that you're staying on your passionate throne and that you're being the leader of your own creative decisions. The, he is ready and willing to make decisions for himself. I love the King of Wands. He's the King of Fire. You know, this is like an Aries emperor. So you want to choose, this is you choosing your empire, building your empire for yourself. 
And I don't know about you, but I don't think any empire was built based off of anything that 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 any peasant wanted. You know, it's a king and a queen energy. And this is a chaotic decision. It is. It's a very chaotic, loud, you know, all over the place decision. But it's up to you to choose what's best for you, okay? So let's let's talk about this king of pentacles. So we have the king of pentacles, the seven of cups, the judgment card, eight of cups, four of cups, ten of swords. So this is where this reading kind of ends. This is Taurus season. This was all underneath the Hierophant card, remember. This all was underneath the Hierophant card. And I'm gonna, you're going to be able to see me put it all back. But do you see this message here? So we need to remain grounded during, during um, emotional confusion. This is about us really keeping in mind, this is Taurus season, right? So Taurus, this is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And this situation, and this, this situation is definitely um, Taurus, okay? And we're going to be very confused. This is an earth sign, okay? So earth signs, we're all embodying, we are all under the awareness of, it, of earth right now. Well, coming in a couple days, this week has a lot to do with the awareness of our earth, which is the awareness of our value, the awareness of our foundation, the awareness of logic, the awareness of stability, money, finances, job, career. That's all earth, value. Okay, so the King of Pentacles would handle this Seven of Cups. He's actually turned his back. If you look at that, he is not looking at the Seven of Pentacles, but I mean, at the Seven of Cups. He is not looking at, at this confused energy. This is a very overwhelming emotion. Like, this is just like the Ace of Cups. So these cups, see this here? No wonder we need the, the sword energies and the, all those aces. Because we are confused about this happiness. We are confused about this Ace of Cups, this new love. Some of us don't trust it. We're like, um, this is a little bit too good to be true. Do you really love me? So we're kind of being logical about this very spiritual thing. You know, and the Seven of Cups does talk about... Um, the Seven of Cups does talk about... You know, and now this king is facing this. So this goes this way. But the Seven of Cups, it does talk about another realm of emotion. This is happening in a different realm, you guys. We are being offered something in a different realm. And all of these opportunities are going to cause a different emotional response. So be careful of the commitments that you make this week. Be careful of the commitments you make in Taurus season because if you take a closer look, some of these cups are filled with very, very toxic things. And we have a lot of happiness on the table. So there might even be certain energies People, places, and things that try to come and, and blind us from the sun. Blind us from this new love. Blind us from our fate and our, our new karma. So this is you just, you know, considering in a very grounded way what all these different cups mean to you. You know, you have this coin in your hand. So I'm very happy to say that a lot of us are going to take our newfound value and make a decision with that. We're not going to make a decision based off of what we've always been because we are becoming something different. This the the sun is here because we are aware of our own value. We're aware of our own our own identities. So make make sure that you're handling this emotional confusion like a king of like the king of pentacles. Okay? And then we have that emotional confusion, you know, we go from the Seven of Cups to the Eight of Cups. So this is when, this is the next part of this journey, which is the Judgment card. So this is an awakening, you guys. This is literally Pluto energy. Pluto is going to be going retrograde at the end of this month. So Pluto is going to be really awakening us to purification. This has everything to do with that Scorpio full moon. Pluto is going to be involved with that. Pluto is involved in this Saturn retrograde as well because Pluto is in, in Capricorn along with Mars in Saturn. So these energies are working together to really play the trumpet of truth. And look at these people in their graves. Okay, they're awakening. So some of us thought something was dead and gone, but it isn't. It's very much alive. It's very much being reawakened and reburned. And you have a second chance at something. So this is happening. And then the card right after this is the fucking eight of cups and so what i see here is the divine i see that the heavenly angels our spirit guides heaven the universe is calling us to something and awakening us and we leave we leave because of that around the scorpio full moon or, or sometime this week we are awakened and we are called so it's in our it's a part of our judgment it's a part of our destiny to walk away from certain emotional things right now 
That's what the Eight of Cups is all about. Walking away from something emotionally investing, something you were emotionally invested in to start a spiritual journey. He is walking away from these emotions, letting the moonlight guide him, letting his soul, he's letting his soul lead him. And this is you letting your soul awaken you. So you get awakened to your soul purpose and you leave a lot behind that you thought you could never leave. You thought you were emotionally attached to those things. But now this week is the start of a new spiritual journey, you guys. And, and I'm telling you, the angels are literally calling us to certain people, places and things. Some of you are walking away from someone to your soulmate. Some of you are leaving certain jobs and leaving certain situations. This is a lot. This is different for all of us. So you're walking away from something for a spiritual purpose. You're following the moonlight. You're following your soul because the angels have awakened you. And then the, the last two cards is the four of cups. Okay, this is what's going to happen for those of you who stay distracted this week. Because you're not going to see this ace of cups. So this is, this is weird. This is... This is the cards telling me what's going to happen for those of you who don't accept this happiness right now. If you don't give in to this happiness, if you don't give in to this new love, the universe is literally turning the wheel of karma for you with all these planets going retrograde. There are certain really promising things coming back into our life. Now, do you see this little figure here? Giving that this is a this is a clouded hand coming out of the sky, but this person is defensive, they're distracted, they haven't meditated, they're closed off heart and mind closed off crossed arms and they're focused on these three cups for whatever fucked up reason these three cups have got this person distracted and so they do not see the ace of cups they don't even see they're too defensive to even see this new ace of cups they're too defensive to even see you know this is this is what's going to happen if you blind yourself to this ace of cups with the blindfold and then you're going to blind yourself to the Wheel of Fortune and the King of Cups and the Ace of Swords and the Queen of Swords. And you're going to blind yourself to this Ten of Cups. You're going to not see. There's something we need to see this week. So this Ace of Cups is right here together. You see those hands. This hand is coming. This hand is coming. This is just a bigger version of the Ace of Cups in this picture. Hopefully you guys know what I mean there. So there, you don't want to you don't want to be defensive about this decision because there's too much going on here, guys, to just ignore. So some of us are distracted by emotional pain. Now, you can either choose the Ten of Swords or you can choose the Ten of Cups because we have both on the table. And, you know, this was my message for last week. So some of us are staying in this painful time. I'll be right back. Guys. my six o'clock alarm go off so you know alarms go off when when there's a reminder so there is a reminder here why would my alarm go off right as I'm talking about this okay so I do remember last week you can go back on my Instagram and see last Tuesday we, we had the ten of swords this Tuesday we moved from the ten of swords to the ten of cups with the, the sun card some of you are distracted em by emotional pain and if you're not careful, this emotional pain is going to keep you from your soulmate. It's going to keep you from happiness. It's going to keep you from sunshine. It's going to keep you from all these beautiful messages on the table. So, you know, this is an ending. You're going to have to let something die mentally. You know, we are coming into this death and rebirth. So let this energy die. Do not, do not be this guy because you're going to miss everything that we just talked about for the last hour. So you have a decision to make. And it, it has to do with either staying in this staying in this pain. Either way, it's a completion. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm choosing the Ten of Cups. I want that. I don't I don't want to stay in this Ten of Swords energy. Either way, the pain is ending. And there's a new there we are somewhere over the rainbow. Way up high. Where troubles melt like lemon drops and high above the chimney tops. I'm telling you. That's where you'll find me. I've been singing that song for the last four days. Every time I get in the shower, I'm singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. The skies are blue. 
So it's about choosing, guys. You know, I know we're in a lot of pain emotionally, but you really want to ask yourself if you want to stay, you know, do you want to stay in that? Is that what you're deep in thought about? Or do you want to take this Ace of Cups, which is going to, if you take this Ace of Cups, we're looking into our future right now. Tarot kind of wraps around like this. So this is actually the beginning of the reading. This is what starts it all off. Us walking, us, you know, saying, fuck it. Fuck that cycle of pain. Every, I feel the new beginning happening with me. I'm going to get my ass up, take those swords out of my back, use it as clarity, unravel my arms, stop being defensive. I'm going to take this Ace of Cups and start this whole reading off. You take this Ace of Cups, you're going to have, you're going to initiate a decision. You're going to initiate karma. You're going to initiate emotion and clarity in the transformation. You do not want to be the poor soul that sits on sits in on this by this tree and misses all of it. And I don't think it's going to be easy to do that. If you do this, you definitely chose to do it because the universe is on our side. The universe is encouraging us to do all of this. So I'm going to put these cards back. Which is, talks about, you know, you, you do need to walk away from something. And it's a part of your judgment. You know, you need to be stable around these energies. There is a decision to make, guys. And it's very chaotic. But we have the King of Wands here to help. We have a lot of energies here to help. We have our future to think about. And it all happens in Taurus season. So hopefully you guys enjoyed me going into, I don't do this often. I only do it when I feel led to, but I felt that I really, really needed, I felt that I really needed to explain this. And you want to know something, guys? I know this message is important because when I sat down to do it, I have a whole entirely different tarot deck on this table, right? And it was after I had got the message. This is a completely different tarot deck. It had the uh, it had the high priestess at the bottom, and I'd be damned if I didn't pick up a stack to reveal the sun card in this deck. So I feel very special about this reading. This is the high priestess and the sun, so spiritual awareness, you know. But I, even even if I pulled a, a card from this deck, I'm pulling the sun card in the key, the queen of wands. So this is about happiness and creativity. Like these are two different sun cards. But either way, they both represent happiness and sunflowers and just summer and spring and light and love and success, warmth. I mean, it's the sun, you guys. This is the week. This tarot week is all about happiness and sunshine. We're gaining awareness of all these things, spiritual awareness, awareness of what truly makes us happy, awareness of our emotions. And I do feel the need to say that a lot of this is going to kick off in Taurus season. For, so for the next month, these energies are going to be happening. So I'm going to get this video uploaded for you guys. Thank you so much if you watched. Please comment below if you are going through something like this. Or, you know, I guess we're going to have to wait until next week to see how these energies really kick off. But my cards don't lie. This is the week for happiness, but you have to see it. You have to align with it. it doesn't, it's not just going to fall into your lap. You have to work for it. That's why I revealed the Eight of Pentacles when I just picked that card up. And now I'm revealing the Five of Pentacles. So some of us have to really walk away from feeling left out in the cold. You know, if you're staying in a place of darkness and hate, you're not going to be able to align with light and happiness. So it's up to you guys. We do have a few decisions to make, but I choose happiness. I choose love. I choose light. And I hope you choose what's best for you. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next videos.